Hi, I'm Cliff Ruddle, and it's a big pleasure for me to be with you today and speak a little bit about canal preparation featuring ProTaper Gold. The international protocol for glide bath management means we need to expand that canal to at least a size 15 hand file. The problem with the 15 hand file internationally over the years is that we have noticed as teachers that it's stainless steel and it's quite stiff. This has led to many block canals, ledge canals, transported foramina, and other problems. So as a result of that, I want to talk about something fairly exciting. That's the Pro Glider. Now the Pro Glider was conceived in 2004 and it launched 10 years later. But what the Pro Glider has, if you look carefully at the active portion, is you can see that it's probably not a fixed tapered file to your eye. You can notice that it is a progressively increasing tapered file. And it's made out of M-wire technology. So before the file is actually produced or machined, it is heat treated. It is heated up to a proprietary temperature, then allowed to cool down, then the file is produced. This is a remarkable citation because in this citation, if you compare a profile 2504 regular night tie with a profile 2504 M-wire technology, you'll notice that there's a 400% improvement in the resistance to cyclic fatigue. This is a staggering number. I'll say it again. There is a 400% improvement in the resistance to cyclic fatigue. So when we have a fairly delicate instrument, this expanding the pathway of where the tin file went, it's going to be important that it can snake through curvatures and cut shape and uh, not break, as an example. So here we go. There are eight changing tapers over the active portion. This means it dominantly is cutting dentin in the body of the canal. That means the coronal in the middle one-third. And I want to really point out that the right way to use the files at 300 RPMs at between 4 and 5.2 Newton centimeters. I'm putting some citations in this webinar because some people like to use ProGlider at a much reduced torque than you're looking at and this means more broken instruments. Remember this file is cutting again with its bigger, stronger, and more efficient blades and we need sufficient torque to turn that file continuously so that it can exceed the Brunel hardness number of dentin and shear dentin and cut dentin during its use. So how does this fit into international protocols for glide path management? Again, traditionally we use the 10 and 15 manual stainless steel hand files. Yet, if we look at ProGlider, you can see at D0 at the front end, if you compare it to the 15 stainless steel file, it's only one hundredth of a millimeter bigger. A human hair is 06, 08, or a tenth of a millimeter. So this is really, really remarkably small. We can say more or less that the 15 file and the ProGlider are the same at D0 and D4. But at D8, D12, and D16, you can begin to see the files getting quite a bit bigger by 16, 41, and 75%. This means that ProGlider is, in fact, able to really make a larger pathway to the terminus, which helps all shaping files progress and advance towards length. So how does this fit into our two 10 and 15 stainless steel hand files? My suggestion I want to encourage you is to eliminate the 15 stainless steel stiff hand file. So the good news is, we still have just a two file sequence, but the better news is we make a significantly bigger pathway to length using a mechanical proglider and we save 40% shaping time. I'll say it again, the proglider will work 40% faster than the stainless steel 15 hand file. So to come back to the concern that there's too big of a jump between the 10 file and the pro glider at D0. You could say theoretically it's 10 to 16 and you might think in fact that that is 
uh, too much. But remember, we don't work one millimeter short. We don't work a half a millimeter short. We work to the radiographic terminus, and we know that the radiographic terminus is a little bit of a little bit of a point longer than the physiologic terminus. There's a little discrepancy between the RT and the PT. And by using a patency file, the tin file is slid to the foramen, to the RT, and then deliberately to. This is done intentionally and deliberately until the file is loose. That means the terminal diameter of the file is a 10 at D0, but at D1, the 10 file is actually a 12. So back to our concern about the 10 to 16 jump. You might think it's 60%, but it's not. In fact, you might say, well, if the 10 file is 12 hundredths at D1, maybe the jump is from 12 to 16. Well, that might be a theoretical discussion, but again, clinically, you're moving that instrument in and out deliberately until it's loose. That means that it's not even a 33% jump. In fact, if you are moving the instrument in and out and you remove the instrument, the terminus has been transitioned to at least a 13, and that means it's a very respectable percentage change of simply 23%. Work the tin file until it's super loose.